Hi, welcome back to the Roseville Library. My name is Jessica and today we are going to be doing another painting class. We are going to be doing warm and toasty, a little campfire scene. And this is what our final product is going to be looking like. So to begin with on this painting, we're actually going to go in first with a pencil. Uh, just so we can sketch out the basic line of where we're going to have our land and then we want to get our flames in here so that way we're not going to have that dark black background uh, that's going to be coming, it's not going to come through so we'll be able to get the flames from our fire are going to be nice and vibrant. So I'm just about a quarter of the way over the canvas here just putting in a basic line, it doesn't have to be perfect. And then we're going to have just about a half circle towards the center. This is going to actually become our fire pit. And then we are going to come up a little bit because our logs are probably going to come up in this vicinity here. So then we're just going to just a rough sketchy idea of where you might have some flames. doesn't have to be anything perfect. We'll probably go in and paint and shape it up as we go anyway. But just something basic, just about like this, will get you through. Okay, so now that we have the basic sketch and outline of what we're going to be doing, I can go in and tell you the colors that we're going to be using for this painting. We're going to have black, white, brown, red, green, orange, and yellow. And then we're going to be using just a small selection of brushes. We've got a thicker brush for our bigger area, medium-sized brush, and then a couple of smaller ones that we can go in with details. And I've got a sponge out too, just in case we need it for some of the uh, grass and different effects it'll give for our painting. All right, to start off, we're going to go in and start painting our background sky, which is going to be our black. So I'm just going to saturate the brush, and then I'm going to start from about a quarter of the way in and just kind of brush out. I'm going to leave a section in the center behind the flame, so that way we can, we're can we going to come in in a little bit to make us a little moon here in the background. So we want to leave just a little section there for that. And we're just going to completely cover from top to bottom where our grass line is. And just try to keep the flames out as much as you can. If you go over some of the areas that you drew in for the flames, that'll be okay. We'll fix it as we go along with our painting. And then once we've reached the, basically gotten our canvas pretty well filled up, then that's where we're going to pause and we're going to want to hit this with the blow dryer so that way we can make sure that we've got this dried and then we can go in and darken it up a little bit more. As you can see, there's a little bit of white that's still showing through from the canvas. So we'll just hit that with a second coat and then we will get ready to move on to our next step.
Okay, so I've went in and I've finished uh, filling in my black and I've kind of brought it down in some to where some of the flames aren't going to be uh, present at and now we're going to go in and start to shape our moon. Um, you can use a brush for this part, but I like to use my index finger. I just kind of dip it in to the paint and get a good bit on there. And then I just start in the middle and then I just slowly start to wind it out like you're just making your circle bigger and bigger as you go. And this is going to kind of create that halo around the moon. And I'm kind of using another finger here because that one got a little bit, <laughs> a little bit too dark. And just swirling around. And then we can come back in uh, again and add a little bit more white here, which is what I'm going to do to brighten that color of the moon a little bit. But you want to make sure, just like with your brushes, you're cleaning your, cleaning your fingers off just a little bit before you go double dipping. <laughs> and then just start in the middle and just gradually just bring it out. So you get something about like that. You've got the real bright center and then you've got just the lighter halo effect around it here. Okay, so now that we've got our moon set up, we're going to come down here and give that some time to dry or you can always hit it with a blow dryer if need be. Um, to start out though, I'm going to add some green and a little bit of yellow because we're going to have, I'm going to start off with the paint closest to where our fire pit's going to be and we're going to have a bit more of a light cast on it. So we're going to start with the lighter shades and work our way up to the darker. And you can do this with your big flat paintbrush or you can also always go in with a sponge at, a time, at times just kind of rotate back and forth between the brushes just until I get the desired effect that I'm looking for. But I'm just tapping the brush lightly, just the, the tip of the bristles and just kind of just pushing it into the canvas. And then now that you've got some yellow in there, or some green and yellow, we can go back in with just some just some yellow. We can you don't have to rinse your brush, you can leave what's on there on there. And just maybe create a few highlights where the flames might be giving a little bit more of a light effect to the grass. And you're just dabbing it on. It doesn't have to be anything thick. You don't want to cover up too much of your green. You can add out. I've gotten into a little bit of my wet black still, but that's okay because we're going to darken up as we go out anyway. And just tapping it in. Okay, so now that we've got the light green and the yellow added in here for our lighting effect, I'm going to take and just dip into a little bit of black and then I'm just going to mix that in with my green. Mine got a little bit too dark here, but that's okay. We've got plenty of green. You can just mix it as you need to. And once we get a dark, medium dark, I guess, green, then we'll go in and I'm going to dab my brush off just a little bit so that way I'll still get that effect. But we're going to do the same thing again, just the tip of that brush. And we're just going to pat it in. It's okay if you overlap a little into some of that lighter color. I, I would even just barely touch and just kind of come in here and just speck some on there. But for the most part, we're just kind of coming in here and creating our shadowed area. And if you don't have a brush and you do prefer the sponge, I can show you with the sponge also. It's the same thing. A little bit more of a 
grassy, bushy effect when you use it, I think. And you're just going to pat it on there. It gives you different textures and makes it to where you can layer it a little bit better. Going in just where I know that the base of our fire pit will be and I'm just kind of darkening that because I think that we'll have some shadows from our stones here. Once you do that though I've kind of covered up a little bit too much of my yellow and light green so I might come back in here and just kind of speckle a little bit more on there but that way we'll have a bit of a shadow created here give us a little bit more depth. So I am done with my grass area. I've completed it, got it to where I like it. Now I'm going to be going in with this medium smallish size brush and this is what I'm going to use to make the border for our fire pit here. I'm going <clears> to <throat> be using it to make some stones so that we have a little barrier between the grass and the fire. In order to do that I'm going to start with a little bit of black and I'm just going to mix it in with the white and that way I can get a gray color that will look more like the stones that are going to go around it. I'm making mine fairly light because I do intend to add some shadows and some highlight to it. Just a light basic gray. And then for the stones we're just going to go in and I just like to use the tap method. I just tap out the shape whatever you think your stone might look like. Some of them might overlap and that's okay. If they start to blend in together, we'll go in with our shadows to show the uh, separation from the stones. And we're just gonna do that all the way around that half circle that we made. I'm starting over on the left side as well so that way I can kind of bring them down and have them meet together in the middle. get it to where we can get them to meet. We've got enough space here, I do anyway, for about two more. And then get that. And then once we've got that first light gray base down, we're gonna wanna dry that so that way we can come in with our highlights and our shadows. Okay, so I've went in and I've dried the stones so that way now we can start creating the shadows that we're going to be seeing towards the bottoms. And then also, where you know that you might have, like I know I have a rock right here that's in front of this one, so I'm going to create a little bit of depth by getting some darker, like some darker tones right here so that way it'll show the separation of the stones so that way it doesn't look like just one big one. So what I'm going to do is just dabbing back into that black and I'm just going to add it to the gray that I already have and just to darken that gray up. And then just with the top of the brush I'm just going to kind of come down here at the base and then around the top of the stone that's right here in front of it. <clears throat> Excuse me. And same with the next one. I know I have the bottom to do and then I can see where I have a rock that's going to kind of be covering up a little bit, so I'm going to add some shadows there. And it's okay if you kind of like work them through here and there as well because we've got different shadows for like the different edges and things that will be hitting on the rocks. You don't want it to be like one just giant solid 
back one there. And then just keep doing that all the way around. Now that I've got over to the left side, I've kind of changed the side that the shadow is on. It's going to be more on the outside, just like over here, and then just kind of coming in the bottom. And just specking it on there, and then just kind of touch here and there around on your stones to maybe create some little different edges and lips on the rock. That's how we get our shadow look on here. So once we've finished getting the shadows onto the stones where we need them, we can go in again. We're just going to mix in just to get a little bit of yellow and maybe pick up just a touch of that little bit of light gray if you still have any, or you can just add some of that dark but I don't want my yellow to be completely bright yellow because it's on the stone, so we're going to be picking up some of the stone color as well. And then I'm just going to just here and there just kind of add a few little specks of light where I think it might hit on the stone towards the top so it's near the flame. Just to give that illusion that our uh, flame is cascading down and giving us light down here on our rocks. And that's all you gotta do for our little bit of highlights. All right, so now that we've got our stones all done, we're able to go ahead and pick up some of our brown. I'm still gonna be using this smallish brush here. It's not quite the smallest one I had, but medium to small brush, so that way we can start to put in our logs for our fire. And to do that, I want some different colors of brown. So I'm gonna take some of the plain brown that I have here, and then I'm just gonna add a dab of black just to kind of darken some of that wood up. And we're gonna have the dark, and then we'll have our medium, and then we'll even maybe go in with a little bit of the white to give some highlight from those flames. So I'm just gonna start off. Generally, when I build a campfire, I do a TP method. So I'm just gonna just kinda bring them in where I think some trunks might be laying, some logs might be laying, rather. And they don't have to be completely all right there in the center. As my fire goes, it starts to get a little lopsided and logs end up everywhere. But I'm just going in right now with just the darkest part of the logs might need to make mine a little bit bigger here. That's the fun thing about painting. You can just add to things as you're going. Not really ever messing up. Just still constantly moving and working it in there. So once you've got the basic bits of your logs, I'm going to add a little piece here of one. Then you can, we've got our dark background, and then we can go ahead and just pick up some of our medium brown. You don't have to have a lot, and then we can just kind of brush some of it in over this dark. Still with the wet, because this way it lets you to kind of mix things together, so that way we're getting more of a realistic look. And then again, I'm going to be taking some of the white. I'm going to add just a touch of white to that light brown that we had. Make an even lighter brown. So that way we can have some highlights. I'm going to have mine just rest across the top. Again, mixing, keeping the canvas wet. So that way we can kind of mix it. It doesn't look like one just straight bold line. And if you need to wipe off your brush, pick up a more, a little bit more of the lighter color. And just kind of mix it up. If you need it to kind of brush out, blend out a little bit more, your line gets too harsh, you can just 
blend it down into our darker colors here. And then you can always go back and forth. Like for me, I've got some wood showing, so you can always pick up some of the light, some of the dark, and just kind of go back in and just touch up on it. Once you've completed all of the wood and got it to where you want it, that's when we're going to go ahead and go ahead and hit it with our hair dryer now. Okay, so now that we've got our logs all nice and dry, we're going to go in and create some hot coals down here at the bottom. And to do that, we're going to pick up, I'm still using that medium small brush, and we're just going to go in and we're going to just dab in some black to start out just kind of filling in where I know that the uh, the ring is if just as if it were still going completely around so I'm just gonna fill in between the logs with the black down over top of the rocks here not over the rocks but up to the rocks and just dabbing it in between them all a little bit in here Still just taking the tip of that brush and just I'm just dabbing at it. Now with still keeping that damp, we don't have to do anything with the drying yet. You can go in and pick up a little bit of this orange that we have. And then you can just begin to kind of speckle that in. You don't want it to look super bright here, so that's why we're not too concerned with drying. And I'm just going right over top of the black. And then I'm going to pick up some of that red because we've got some really hot coals going in here. And then I'm not going to quite dab as much red, but here and there. And I'm going to pick up more red as I go because I do want this to look a little bit more bright than the orange did. Might have went a little overboard, but that's okay because we're painting. We can just go right back into that black <laughs> and kind of tone that down just a little bit. And there we've got our hot embers. Okay, so now I've come in and I tightened up the black closer to the logs here. Uh, I didn't want the flames to really be coming out too much, so I wanted to focus in on the center point here. Um, to begin, I'm just going to go in with the orange just as is, and I'm going to just start to create some strokes in an upward motion and it's okay if they kind of start to die out as you go up um, just about they kind of you know just like in a normal fire they're going to kind of fade out as you go it doesn't have to be any specific design or shape to them just however you want to see them coming up the flames just do all kinds of things as they're blowing in the wind here and then I'm just going to get all of this orange focus in on getting it all where I want it. I'm kind of coming around the top of the logs and then that way it looks as though it's all got the orange coming off and then I'm just continuing to just bring that orange up and just letting it flick up the top of, towards the top of the canvas. It's okay where we've got some of this darker. I've brought my black in a little bit far here but we'll still be able to work with that and just kind of bringing in some more of this orange in the centers here it doesn't have to come exactly from the logs and you can even have a few little wispies that kind of come out toward the side here where the flame might be catching in the wind and same with it on the other side I'm going to have mine have a few little spots where it's just kind of coming up off and then 
once you get that majority of your orange in here, I've done mostly orange. I, I know that it will blend well with the yellow. And then the red we're just going to faintly put in there. We see more of the oranges and yellows usually. So what I'm going to do is while that's still wet, I'm just going to go ahead and I don't, you don't even have to rinse your brush. I'm just going to go straight into this yellow I have. And then I'm just going to brush in here and there over the orange. It can be darker in some spots, lighter in some spots. And we're just doing the same motion. I tend to stroke, stroke, stroke as I do it, just so that way I keep my uh, brush on the right path. Otherwise, I tend to get a little wobbly when I try to take my paintbrush a certain way. If I try to just go in one fell swoop, it just doesn't necessarily go where it's supposed to. And I'm just creating these. I'm not quite taking them up as far as I did with the orange. I'm just kind of creating them in between the orange ones. And again, where we had that orange coming off of the logs, we can go in and mix in some of this yellow as well. I'm just sweeping some of this yellow in with the orange here on the sides. And back with the orange, just where you might need to. My uh, orange kind of disappeared over here in the black a little, so I'm just retouching over that a little bit. And if you notice that you might have took out too much orange in some of your areas, you can just come right back in and add a little bit more. And once you've got that basically where you want it, that's when we can go ahead and grab a little bit of the red. I suggest using a, the least amount of all with the red. And I'm just going to add in just a few few red spots here. And again, I'm just going to maybe speck in just a little bit around these logs where all the colors are going to kind of mesh together. Now once you've got that where you want it, this is where you can go in again with the hair dryer. You can dry this and then you can come back in and darken up if you want these to be a little bit more vibrant. I'm going to do that because I've noticed I've got a good bit of black I've brought in too far so I want to go ahead and bring some more of the color pop out. So I've went in and I've darkened up all of my flames, got those the way I wanted them. And now I'm going to begin starting with my marshmallows and my roasting sticks. And to do that, I'm actually going to start with white. Um, just because we've got so much collar and so much dark areas going on in the canvas, I don't want it to um, I don't want it to take away from the vibrancy of it. So we're just going to start with white so that way everything can go on. And all we're going to do is, I'm just like I am here, I'm just going to brush in the shape of a marshmallow. It's going to be about like a rectangle but with rounded edges and then I'm just going to fill it in with that white and then I want one coming in on each side so we're going to do the same thing over here. It doesn't have to be exactly the same as the other one. Be a little bit bigger, maybe it's a little bit closer, a little further away from the the flames. We don't want it to get burnt. We want it just a nice toasty color on it. This one kind of lost a little of its shape, so I'm gonna go back in and just kind of touch up these edges and fix it here just a little bit. And then I am going to come in here and off of the middle of my marshmallow, I'm just going to 
just barely to speck a little bit of white here. It doesn't have to be super solid or perfect. And this is going to be our sticks coming through the fire. And they're just going to come down and just right out of the page. We've got some campers that are just sitting right here behind the fire. Just a little out of sight. And they've got their marshmallows roasting while they're sitting on a log back here. And just going to do the same thing with this stick. Just going to bring it down out of the out of the canvas. And it's okay if you get a little crazy with your stick like I did. Mine's a little thick here. We can always touch that up with some black later. So once you get the white done, we're going to hit this with the blow dryer. And then we're going to come in, add a little bit of color to our marshmallows and our sticks. Alright, so I've gotten all of this stuff, all of the white dried. I'm going to go back in with white for just my marshmallows only. And I'm just going to just recover them. I've got areas that are still showing through. If you don't, that's okay. You can wait until the next step to start anything else. But in my case, I've got a good bit showing through. I wanted to get that masked with some more white here. And I got that one good, so I'm just going to come over here to the one beside it. I'm just filling this in. And now that I've got the marshmallows covered, I'm going to take and I'm going to add just a little bit of brown to some white. I want just a nice light brown color. If you want, you can add a little bit more brown to make it a little more toasty, depending on how you like your marshmallows, I suppose. But for this one, and for the sake of the picture, I'm just going to start with just a creamy tan color of brown. And I'm just going to kind of swirl it in here a little bit towards the bottom edge in a circular type shape. And a little bit across the top and bottom here. I'm just barely touching it on the rest of it just to give it a toastier a little bit of a toasty look and some shadow as well. And I'm going to come in and do the same thing. I want just a little bit of a circular shape here. And I'm just going to touch across the top here, down the bottom, and just kind of hit a little bit in the middle with that. And then I am going to add in more brown to that color we just created because I want a more toasty marshmallow than what I've got going right now. And I'm actually going to go ahead and switch over to this real fine brush that we <clears throat> that I showed you from the beginning. Don't mind mine, it's got a mohawk today. But I'm just going to take and swirl that into that darker brown we just got. And I'm just going to use that to make a little bit of a finer swirl down here at the bottom of our marshmallow. And then we'll go ahead and do that over here on this other side. Just a real fine line. I'm kind of tracing the circle and then just creating a bit of another one in the middle here. And then with that, I'm going to start specking around here a little to show where I've really started getting that marshmallow toasted. There we go, we've got some nice toasty marshmallows. So once we've finished our toasty marshmallows, we're going to go in again with a little bit of black and we're going to mix it in with that brown, just the original brown that we had right out of the bottle. And I'm just going to create a little bit of a darker color of wood for our sticks. And once you've got it mixed to the color you want, we're just going to bring it through the top of the marshmallow, but you don't want to take it all the way down the marshmallow as if the stick is inside. 
I'm just going to go ahead and do the tips of both of the sticks. And then you can start to work your brown down like you did with your white all the way out of the canvas here. And then you can just pick up some of your other colors like we did with our logs and just kind of, while it's still wet, just blend it down through. I'm using the medium brown now. Kind of just covering up a little bit of those spots of white I left behind. And then still with a brush that's clean, we can pick up some of that toasty marshmallow color and that can be our highlight on our sticks. And it doesn't have to be a solid line. You can just break it up as you're coming down. Just kind of brush it here and there on the stick. Maybe a little bit up here at the top where it's close to the fire. All right, so we've got our marshmallows and our sticks done and we're almost finished. For our last step, we're gonna take our big brush that we use for our background and I just dip it in my water. You might want a little bit clearer water. I'm just using mine with the muddy water and we're just gonna throw it in here to the white. So mine's creating kind of a gray color because my water ended up mostly black. But if you want it to be really, really white, you can go and just rinse off with some new. Then you're gonna to wanna to tap off some of that excess water. And then what we're gonna do is we're going to use our fingers. This is where we get dirty, but it makes the picture really fun. We're just going to take our finger on the brush and we're just going to run it backwards along it. But we're going to do it pretty hard so we can flick. And then all of a sudden you have a bunch of stars all over. So we've got a nice starry sky to look at while we're camping and roasting our marshmallows. Once you get most of your specks in there, you can go and even just add in, I use my smallest brush that I started with. You can put your little, maybe a little shooting stars in your picture and just maybe a couple of bigger stars here and there. But there you have it. You've got your nice little campfire scene and a little starry night here.